Hey what's up, Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can set up a timer to repeat a task in Unity. For our demo I have four cubes set up that are all repeating on different timers using this little flasher component to just flash them red for a quarter second. The first one I'm going to take a look at is my coroutine timer. This works just by starting a coroutine in the awake method and then waiting in an infinite loop. So this is going to be true forever, it's going to loop forever. And we yield return, new wait for seconds, and that then we pass in the timer speed there. And then we call the flash. So this is going to loop over, it's going to wait, flash, loop again, wait, flash, and continue on indefinitely. The second method that we have is the invoke timer. This works by calling invoke repeating in our awake method, where we pass in the string name of the method that needs to be called, an initial timer, that's right here, the initial time, and then a repeat rate. I have these both set to the same, so it'll start after two seconds and flash every two seconds. Now the thing I don't like about this method is that if we renamed the do flash method, this is gonna break and we won't know. There's no compiler time check because we have to reference it by string. So I really try to avoid this one. The next method that we have is a counting timer. And the counting timer works by adding up the time that has passed in this elapsed value. So we have a float here for the amount of time that's passed. In the update method, we add on delta time, and whenever that gets to the timer speed or greater, we reset it to zero and call the flash. And then the final method we have on our timestamp timer works by storing the last time that we did the action, and then we do a check here by subtracting the current time minus the last time we did the action, and we check to see if that's greater than or equal to the timer speed. If it is, we set the last timestamp to the current time, and we call the flash. And this is my preferred and go-to method just because it's kind of easier to use, but if you really want to be able to debug, the counting timer is great too. So if you look at the counting timer and you switch over to debug mode, you can see the timer going up right there. That's really helpful. It's a little bit less useful on this one because it just updates to the current time. So next time you need to set up a timer, just think about your different options. Pick the one that makes the most sense. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and hit subscribe.